Well, it's very nice to be here with you all. Um, and um, I really want to just uh, say again um, how wonderful it's been that Pete and Carol and all the uh, folks here have done such a great job in getting us all together, um, no mean feat, um, and uh, for you all for uh, showing such interest. And um, the four of us have been talking over our bed and breakfast breakfast um, about how interesting it is to be amongst all of you, so many of you coming from criminal justice, and for us to be able to eavesdrop on your conversations about the kinds of things you're really teasing out and the light you're shedding that all of us need to um, listen to. So it's been really a learning process for all of us as well. So we, we're, in your, we're in your debt. Um, Carol, a uh, very, very nice introduction left out all the years where I wasn't a feminist. Uh, that was very kind. Um, but actually, um, it, it helps me kind of keep in mind what it means to have a feminist curiosity and what it reveals that otherwise I'd miss. Um, when I was at Berkeley, when Berkeley was Berkeley, um, in the 60s um, during the free speech movement, in fact, there was no discussion of feminist uh, questions. Uh, there was no feminist theorizing that was made visible in the political science department, and I don't think in many of the other departments. In the free speech movement, there was absolutely no um, curiosity about the gender and sexual politics of the free speech movement, which were intense, um, but one didn't know how to talk about them at the time. Um, and what I realize now, because I really try to think back, do, I mean, don't you oftentimes do that? After you kind of see something new, you try to think back and remember what it was like when you couldn't see it, right? To try and keep, one, to keep humble, um, and <coughs> two, to s stay grateful for those who kind of opened your eyes to something that you'd missed, but also to remember what it was like to look at the world when you thought you were being really energetic in looking at the world, you thought you were being, not arrogant, but you thought you were being smart about the way you were looking at the world. And then with this new way of looking at the world, you realize, oh my God, all that time I missed something. So I, Carol was also nice not to, I, I wrote a whole bunch of books um, before I had um, any feminist curiosity. Um, and the one before, um, the first of the feminist books, um, was called Ethnic Soldiers, which is really, and I, I still like the book. I learned a lot in researching it. That's usually why you like a book, not so much what the product was, but what you learned when you're researching. And it's a book about the uh, a comparative uh, study of about 15 different uh, countries um, of how race and ethnicity are wielded to create militaries and actually to create police forces. Um, and in Ethnic Soldiers, um, as with any other book, um, and if some of you um, are just thinking about writing your first book, keep in mind that you should always, at least with your first book, be the one that does the index. Don't let them farm it out. Um, because indexes are very political. The doing of indexes are very political, and those of you who have written one or more books know this. Because it's indexes where you decide what you're going to make visible. Um, and so indexes are very important to do. And I, this was a book that came out from Penguin, UK, um, back in, I don't know, 1980, I guess. Um, but I was in Oslo at a peace research institute in Oslo called PRIO, um, doing the index. And uh, if you've ever spent any time in Oslo in the autumn, you know that things pretty much close down at about 5. Um, it's a kind of early go-to-bed uh, kind of town, or at least was in the... Um, in the 80s, and I was at a uh, coffee shop. I can remember this really clearly. I was at a coffee shop, um, and I was doing the indexes. Now, this is before the indexes were all computerized, um, and so you had your green cards for the major topics and the pink cards for the subtopics under it, you know, and you're trying to decide where you'd put Navajos, which, of course, were very important to the U.S. military in World War II, and so, you know, you're doing that sort of thing. But at this time, you know, because you're always writing books not only in global history time, you're writing it in personal time. So this was about a, a moment where, um, I, of course, I had friends who became feminists much more quickly than I did. I was a little slow. And um, so I had friends who were, you know, making me read feminist books, right? I wasn't doing any feminist research. I wasn't doing any feminist teaching. But 
I, you know, had good friends who were much smarter than me and having and amongst the works they were having me read were those by Adrian Rich, who many of you know as a poet, but is also a feminist theorist. And, uh, and so, probably you've had this experience. 